introduce a special guest here to RMI today. Uh, Holly Lewis is a friend of mine who works for Central McConnell here in uh, Covers for Ohio County. Called us about a month ago asking uh, about maybe the center coming to visit RMI. He's going to be in the, he's going to be in the area today, and uh, so, you know he went. We'd like to go by to a place where people are working at and talk to work with each other. But, uh, we were very honored that he uh, thought of us and uh, was willing to come back here by here today. So at this time, I just turn the microphone over to him. It's Senator Mitch McConnell, <laughs> senior senator from the state of Kentucky. Well, thank you very much, Mayor. It's good to see all of you, and I appreciate the opportunity to come by RMI and just part of what you do. I many people work here. And uh, so far, I've heard pretty good news that uh, the employment here has been uh, steady. The car business seems to be uh, picking up. And uh, we were also talking about the health care issues that the country is confronting with on Obamacare. And so far, you guys are coming out pretty well. Uh, the, uh, a whole lot of other businesses are not coming out uh, too well under Obamacare. And, uh, I'm glad that, that you all are so well managed. It looks to me like, at least in the beginning, you're going to, going to be a lot uh, better off. You know, we've got uh, a number of uh, significant challenges confronting uh, our country. Um, I think the biggest one is the, the slow rate of growth and high unemployment. Uh, we had, back in 2008, a pretty deep recession country. Typically after a really deep recession you have a quick, you a really quick bounce back, but we didn't this time. And in fact we've had the slowest recovery after a deep recession uh, since World War II. And my view is that the, uh, the government itself has done a number of things that have made it more difficult for us to have the kind of recovery we normally have. So let me give you some examples. We have borrowed a lot of money. We have spent a lot of money. The Obamacare law is creating all kinds of regulatory nightmares. And we now have a cumulative national debt. We add up the annual deficits into the national debt. We have a debt as big as the size of our economy, and that Know, makes you look a lot like Greece or one of these European countries that's got a lot of challenges when you have a debt that big. The other thing that tends to come from having a big debt is slow growth. And I mentioned that even though you all are fortunate to maintain your employment here, uh, the unemployment in the country is still way higher than it ought to be. And in Kentucky, it's even higher than that. So. I worry a good bit about how do we get back to the growth rate that we sort of are normally accustomed to in this country. It's pretty clear to me we're not going to do it by borrowing and spending and passing things like Obamacare and, and <coughs> the kind of regulatory scheme we've had. You're, you've probably got friends in the coal business. In the eastern Kentucky coal fields, <laughs> we have a depression lost 5,000 coal mining jobs, and for every coal mining job you lose, you lose three more other kind of jobs. Produced entirely by a national administration that is hostile to the coal business, making it hard to dig coal, making it hard to burn coal. And even if you were not in a, in a county that had coal, you have a big stake in coal because our utility rates are, are, are low, because of our proximity to coal. 90% of the uh, electricity in our state comes from coal-fired generation. And um, this war on coal is going to end up dri driving the utility rates up uh, for all of us. And this company came here nine years ago. I'll bet you low utility rates were one of the reasons, in addition to our location and proximity to Toyota, that you were here in the first place. We have two, we have had two great advantages. One is our location for plants like this. We are within 600 miles of two thirds of the population of the U.S. and you're in close proximity to the people you supply. The second advantage we had was very low utility rates in 
12 years, we've had the lowest utility rates in the entire country, and that's because of coal. So I worry that this war on coal that's been launched by the administration, which is very hostile to coal, produces uh, not only fewer jobs in coal mining areas, but higher utility rates uh, for the rest of us. So I hope we'll, we'll have a chance to go in a different direction in the, in the future. Those are a couple of the issues I wanted to touch on, and then I'd be happy for the balance of whatever time we have, uh, Mayor, to just uh, throw it open and see what people might want to uh, talk about. The first question is always the hard one to get. Team, yeah. When you go to Madisonville today, when you go to Madisonville, you're doing the rally, right? Yeah, there's going to be a coal rally down in uh, down in Madisonville this afternoon. I'm going to I'm going to end up there. You know, we're trying to send the message to the national administration that a war on coal is a war on Kentucky, and a really bad idea. I was at a rally down in East Kentucky earlier this year <coughs> on the same subject. And um, there, there is a, an obvious bias by the national administration against coal. You know, they, they like what they call green energy, wind and solar. The problem with that is that wind and solar are largely not commercially viable. So what the national government's been doing is basically being venture, playing venture capitalists, investing our tax money in commercially non-viable energy sources losing the money and of course not getting the result. And in, on the, on the, in the coal fields, they're both trying to make it difficult to dig coal, but at the plants make it difficult to burn coal. So there's a clear you know, bias against coal. And you know, we've got huge coal supplies in this country. And they, they, you know, they are pursuing these anti-coal policies, presumably because of what they believe is a global climate change issue. You've heard about it, the warming of the planet. Look, I don't even want to get into that argument, whether the planet's warming or not. There are people on both sides of that. But let's just make the obvious point that if it's a global problem, one country tying their hands behind their backs economically is not going to have any impact. Because I assure you the Chinese and the Indians and others who are trying to have a growing economy are not going to do it. So the ultimate result of uh, handicapping yourself is you export jobs to some place that's not going to do that. So I think it is a foolhardy exercise, and it's particularly devastating to a state like ours that has benefited from coal jobs and low utility rates, both. And um, that's why we say a war on coal is a war on all of Kentucky, and that's what these rallies are about. Are you going to focus on the people that have already retired and they need their benefits, or is it just keeping the job? Well, I mean, they're entitled to their benefits as well. <coughs> Mainly, this is about the future. Yeah. Not the people who are retired, but the people we hope are going to have work uh, in the coming years. I mean, we still have a very significant... It, 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 the situation in, in coal in the western part of the state is better. Yeah. Better. Not great, but better. In, in the east, it's, um, it's a depression, but it's not great here. Hey, Senator, I think also people need to realize, I know we're sitting here and we think, you know, we make metal stamping, we make automotive parts, the coal industry doesn't affect us, but I think it's important to realize just how much it does affect us because of what you say, the utility rates and stuff that are favorable in the state of Kentucky, and it's very because of coal. You know, those rates start going up, it's going to start with a squeeze on everybody's bottom line. That's where it's going to affect these companies that aren't quote unquote coal businesses, but they are very much affected. Yeah, I mean, the, the mayor is is, uh, is right. I mean, we all benefit from low utility rates, whether at home or at work. And we've had all across our state really, really low utility rates. And as I said, coupled with our location, that's been an advantage that we've had. I'm sure that's why these guys are here. Huh? That's why your job is here location and low utility rates. You bet, that's why you're here. And uh, to the extent that the rates get higher, it obviously has an impact on attracting new jobs and keeping uh, keeping current jobs. So, um, it, 
it's, it's a real frustration. I, I hope the president and the administration start heading in a different direction. We're trying to send them a message in Madisonville uh, today. What else can you do besides maybe a rally to change the ideas of the government in Washington about this? Well, you, it sounds uh, self-serving to say, but you can change the government. You know, right now I'm the, I'm the leader of the minority party in the Senate. If you're a football fan, I'm the defensive coordinator. One good step would be to make me the offensive coordinator after the November election, the 14th. Uh, the current majority leader of the Senate I give you a direct quote from him about coal. My counterpart, the majority leader of the Senate, believes, quote, coal makes you sick, end quote. So the first step would be to change the makeup of the Senate, and then in 2016, there will be a new president. I don't know who that will be, which party it will be, but an opportunity to look back at the last eight years and see whether or not that worked. You know, I think it was Albert Einstein probably the smartest man who ever lived, who said the definition of insanity was doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. In the last four and a half years, we've been borrowing and spending and taxing and regulating. And I think it's appropriate to ask after four years of that, how did it work out? We need to go in a different direction. The only thing that's gonna get America moving is a, is, a, is a good economy. A good economy. And a good economy is an unemployment down in the as recently as 10 years ago, it was down in the high four, 4.7 or 4.8 percent. Now we're at 7.5. It's a little bit lower than it was, but that's way, way too high. And um, I don't think all this borrowing and spending and taxing is ever going to get the economy going. We need to quit borrowing, quit spending, quit taxing, and, and particularly quit all the overregulation. It's virtually impossible to get a permit to start a coal mine in East Kentucky. Virtually impossible. And the way they do it is they don't give you an answer. You try to get a permit and they sit on it. So my colleague, Senator Paul, and I have introduced a bill not to tell them what to do, but to tell them to make a decision. You know, just how long can you sit on a permit application without ever telling the, the investors who are trying to start a coal mine whether or not it's going to ever happen. And of course, if you can't get an answer, you can't plan. Those are the kinds of things that need to stop. And so, in our democracy, the American people decide what course they want to take, and um, they'll have an opportunity to decide that in 14 and again in 16. Senator, I have an issue that might be interesting to measure some of our employees here. Where you stand on that? Same about President Obama's stance on gun control. Well, I'm uh, I have an A plus rating with the NRA, and I, you know, share the view of any Kentuckian that you know gun control means a steady aim. Uh, we, we we don't need uh, we don't need any any uh, any more gun control laws. There are a certain number of them already, and um, I do not think any of these efforts to pass new gun control laws will have any impact on crime. The people who want to commit crimes will find a way to do it. And, uh, I, you know, I spend part of my time in the, in the nation's capital where they're very strict on control laws and plenty of crime. I, I just don't think there's a correlation between the two. Thanks for the opportunity to be, uh, to come by and good luck to all of you. Thanks so much.